Lots of traffic on Lake Street the morning of August 2nd, 2019. Calvin Castine. That's uh, State and Montgomery intersection just up the road from us. Across from uh, businesses that have come and gone over the years. Uh, I look across that I'm married to Judy Yangtill and I know she spent uh, a lot of her youth working in Ankill's restaurant, which was formerly located right there. But a lot, of, a lot has happened, a lot of changes. I spent a few years working out of the North Countryman office when it was right there. I didn't work out of there, but we'd stop in there and bring our, our news to Luella and send it on to Denton Publications in Elizabethtown. That place has seen a lot of changes. Armin's Place 2 was in there for a lot of years, but it's, it's closed up a few years ago. So a lot of businesses come and, and stick around for a while. And uh, there are very few that have been here for a long time, but there are some. And here's one that's relatively new. Not the heads up, but right next door to it. This fellow right here, Jed Bone. How, how are we doing this morning, Jed? Pretty good, beautiful weather today. Lovely weather in the neighborhood today. So uh, we're at 103 Lake Street, and you've got the, uh, is it called Grunts Pilot Bots? Grunts that... Pilot Bots, aerial photography, 2D mapping, and 3D modeling. All right, useful for things such as construction projects, insurance for disasters, land use planning, marketing, roof inspections, or just to hang the picture on your wall. I, I've got a few pictures hanging on my wall. There used to be uh, people in airplanes that would fly over your your home and take a shot of it and send you a sample of it and take, See if a, you cha to take a chance it. if you you might want to buy a copy or two and and uh, they made enough to pay their time in their airplane I guess so. yep oh well, like one nice thing with this is you can schedule it so it's a, instead of having some guy just randomly fly over your property sometime then offer you the photo if you wanted a picture of your property from the air you can get it ready and then call me uh -huh. And then you can have it all set for for when you want it, instead of just some guy randomly flying over. Yeah, you can even be out there waving at the at the drone, right? Yep. Yeah, you don't have an airplane; it's a drone. It's drones. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Should we step inside? Sure. Lovely day. I like to stay out here, but I know I'd not... like to stay out here too. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna go inside. You want your tripod? Because oh yeah. This. All right, we've walked in off the street, and it's a nice day out there, probably in the upper 70s at the moment, going to hit the low 80s and no low humidity. Are these some of the shots you've taken here, Jed? Yep, this is over, uh, okay. well, nearby Chattagay, but a little bit east of Malone. Uh, it's all the windmills. Not all of them. <laughs> Not all of them, yeah. <laughs> but it's a bunch of the windmills, fall photos, so it's got all the color and everything. And this is printed on wood oh okay it comes with a nice little bracket uh, it comes with its own bracket this one here is Fort Montgomery yeah. this wood, it's stretch canvas on, uh, kind of a little crappy wooden frame thing. All right. That's, and then uh, these are some of the smaller ones this is this is point View from the, the Alberg side. They've got a store where people can buy. Now this. Yeah, great big. It's like a six-foot-long towel. Uh huh. And my intention with these, these can, these can also be ordered. But I got these wood frames set up, uh -huh. and I'm going to stretch this across. I can fill the interior up with more towel material and sew it, sew it shot on the back. Acoustic panels cuts down the echoing, covers some of the wall space of the room, and it's my prints. Right, and if put in an outside wall, it's insulation. I wouldn't know how good of insulation it is. <laughs> hey, it's not the <laughs> any insulation is better than none. It's better than none. All right. Uh, but yeah, it's this. This is this is Gaines um, Marina. Gaines Marina. 
You can see the Wyeth facility in the background. They only had demolished that small section at the point. At that point, we just left there, and there's a whole lot more destruction <laughs> at this point in time. Go ahead. Yeah, uh, that one down there. Well, you can probably recognize that one. Fort Montgomery. Mm -hmm. uh, there's another wood print of Fort Montgomery over there. So, do you sell towels too? Uh, that's on the web page. Okay. I don't actually sell anything in the store itself. If, if well, I might sell leftover T-shirts if I do an event. Uh huh. But uh, everything is generally sold on the online store. Well, can they order online and stop in and pick it up? Well, they get shipped directly to their house. They just put, they go onto the online store, put in their address, and it ships directly to their house. So maybe they live across the street from you, and they want to come in and. Because it doesn't default to my address. Oh, so you don't? They're not from here. They, you, yeah, you have to. Ha you'd have to have it shipped here. Yeah. Oh, so it's not like you have them here. No. Okay. I don't keep inventory in the store that All much. Right. All right. So what else did you want to show us? So we got. Yeah. I'm one of those guys who can't have too many shots at Fort Montgomery. Yeah. Uh, nope. I'm no Jim Millard, but I like Fort Montgomery. Oh, there's a project I want to do there, but I haven't had the time to do it yet. And, and of course, by aerial views, you're not trespassing, are you? No. Yeah. Although, which photo? When I took that one, I was actually for with officers. Uh -huh. That one, I think I was not the photo, but I was there with opposition too. Okay, so you were shooting on, you were on ground, and the drone was... But yeah. actually, you could be in a in a boat and be doing this from the air. Oh yeah, I've got video from uh, Point Roche, and I took took it from from someone's boat because uh, boat because I can't I can't operate it on state property, uh -huh. but I can fly over state property right. as long as I don't land or take off from it. So I, someone offered their boat so I could take video and photos of Point Roche. Uh, look at look at the the stuff that's falling down here alongside the the building here. Oh yeah, most of all this is from the ramparts that were up here. Continuing to self destruct. Yeah, this photo I think is like three years old now. So it'd be 2016. Yeah, it's all the same tree species out there, so it's just yellow because they're all the same tree. Then you have the red from the sumac on top of it. I don't know if it's poison sumac or not. I'm not <laughs> climbing up there to find out. <laughs> uh, I think until you uh, start cutting into it, you won't get uh, anything from the leaves, but I don't know that. No, probably not. So, nice shot. Mm -hmm. So, stuff like that is on your, in your online store. Yep. All right. So, so if you don't, uh, what do you use this downtown location for if... Uh, Oh, if people can't walk in and buy something. Oh, I use it for doing paperwork. People can come in here because I've got this TV set up here. So if people get photos of their property, property and want to see it, this is a 64-inch TV that I can display it on. Uh huh. Okay. And I was like, when I got that, I was looking at either getting a projector to just project it on the wall, but then for that I got to shut the lights off, and then right. and it, it's not as high a resolution. So I got the TV here to to show everything off. And then I do, I do some computer coding in here, I do video editing in here, I fill up the paperwork, if I have paperwork I need to fill out, and so on, in my little office space here. So, closed. Uh, <laughs> when are you here? Uh, I am here, depends on how much I'm on the road, but I will be open Friday afternoon, usually starting around 3 or 4, to about 6 or 7. Then I'm, on, I'm in here Saturday, starting about noon or 1, to about eight and those are the only two days I'm generally open uh, uh, the other days I'm open by appointment so just give me a call and I'll come in, I can come in we can set up an appointment time o or if you see me if you walk by and you see the lights are on call the number because I'm probably in here working on the number on the outside of the building yep those the business cards out there have numbers I'm getting a vinyl sign for the outside so what is the number we're all dying to find out 518-536-27 Two seven nine two. Okay. I don't often call myself. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I haven't called yourself in a while. Mm -hmm. Okay. I've got some three models of the demolition of 
twice I've done. All right. I want to see them. All right. Let me get the camera set up, and we'll. Uh, I was just there shooting some uh, some video. There's, uh, at this point in time, we're about halfway through this building here on this August 2nd. The windows are all out of this building here. And uh, as I said in that little video, we're only a month, or just barely a month, a little over a month away from school starting. So this uh, demolition has to be pretty much done by the end of August. So I'll shut the camera off, relocate the, the camera, and listen to Jed and his narration of his video, drone video of the destruction of Goliath Arist. Alright, I'm going to talk kind of loud because I'm going to point the microphone in uh, Jed Thone's uh, direction. Uh, he's going to shut the air conditioning off so we'll have less background noise. Uh, yeah, we don't... Uh, we don't get enough time that we get to use our air conditioning. So when we use, when it's a day we might need it, we always put it on just so we can hear that that sound because <laughs> it's a it's a long winter. Here's a, and it's a winter scene here, and you're pointing the camera north. I'm gonna put that mic in your direction here, and I. I'm gonna, we're just going to talk loud, Jed. We'll, okay. The, on the camera, Mike will pick up our voices. Yep. So, in the top, use, your, out, use your outdoor voice. Okay. All right. So, uh, this is a, a February scene here. Yep. February 18th. February 18th. I took these photos. Uh, destruction has begun, and I do want to get some former Wyeth people and get, uh, get some uh, stories from them as uh, time marches on. But, uh, so is this photo available on your website currently? or uh, At the moment, no, but it will be in the future. I'm kind of compiling all the photos together for a big project, and when the project is done and the demolition is finished, there will be an entire collection on the website. Okay. Um, we've mentioned that website. I don't think we've said what it, where to find it. Uh, it's gruntspilotbots.com. Gruntspilotbots.com. Pilotbots.com. And I can just open it another tab, bring it over. What is it with uh, drone people? What? My friend uh, Brian McBride has one, Northeast Geospatial. Uh, <laughs> none of these things roll off the tongue here. No. You know? Nothing is going to say, oh, yeah, it's got to it's be grunt spots, pilots. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, the reason for this is I'm a veteran. And there's a company called Grunts Move Stuff over in Vermont. And I basically copied the idea and called it Grunts Pilot Bots. Because it's, it <laughs> describes who owns the company and what I do All in right. one name. Right. <laughs> and this is my web page, and the online store is here. You just click on that and you loads up. Okay. And if you hear your, these are all the images I currently have on here. Okay. So if you can just go there and. And you can get um, like coffee mugs and stuff. Okay. But uh, we, we can go through that later on because we're, we're still doing the Wyeth stuff. Yeah. That's why we're here. Mm -hmm. All right. So there's uh, February 18th. February 18th. And I've got photos from March. Uh, did you do any video or is it all photos? Oh, no. This video. Just not from the winter because the, I have my equipment kind of is a bit finicky when it's cold. Uh huh. So I just popped it up for a few minutes to take photos. And it doesn't work correctly if it's too cold outside. If it's below about 32 degrees, I just generally don't fly. And in February and March, it's kind of hard to get a temp. Yeah. It's not often. It's over 32 degrees. Well, this March, but more normally March is milder than it was this year, but February, certainly not. And there's, of course, the Rouse's Point Bridge up that way. And yep. And you can see Fort Montgomery in the background. Yeah. And it's very nicely detailed photos, too. 
and they did this section. And actually, you can see part of the reason why it's probably all demolished is the roof is caved in over already over here, which you couldn't see from the ground. Right. And I didn't actually notice it right away. So here's May. And this one has a video. Ooh. Which loaded up on the wrong screen. The downside of having three monitors is you're never quite sure which screen it's going to load up on. Okay, here's the video. And you can see the sub substation in the background. And this is where a bunch of storage facilities were, but they're all demolished now. The cooling system is still there at that time. I think this warehouse is going to stay. Just, I'm speculating here. I don't actually know. You can see the progress of the demolition in this video back on May 10th. Can you pause it? Yes. All right. Right in the... Whoops. <laughs> Right in the bottom of the picture is the union employee's entrance. And with all the destruction going on, that building is still standing there. Why Why they would ironically keep the employee's know. entrance <laughs> uh, with all the other destruction going on, I just don't understand. It's kind of, I think, irony, but uh, oh, it, it is be, what it is. It might be because it's a newer building and it's smaller. Yeah. Because, like, you can see more clearly here where the roof is caved in. Up there. It's caved in up there. Yeah. And this building is old, and I believe, again, speculation. I don't actually know this. Speculation. I believe the older building has asbestos, which well. is why they waited to start demolishing it until school let out, because they don't want kids getting breathing in all that, all that dust. And it's probably why... Like, this small building here is newer, easy to remodel. The old building, trying to remodel a building with asbestos in it. From my insurance work that I do for insurance inspections, that is an absolute nightmare. So it's easier just to demolish the building. Which is probably why that's staying and the rest of this is going. And I don't think, because this is new enough, it wouldn't have those issues. Also, according to my mom, because she used to work at Wyeth, the, the way this building was subdivided would make it a nightmare to remodel the building anyway because they made rooms of rooms and just as a patchwork of different remodels over the years and was a logistical nightmare to maintain. Okay. And then we can go back. Um, now this is a video so you can continue the video. Sure. There we go. The drone is very quiet. I can't even hear it. Yeah, there's no sound recording on the drone. <laughs> it doesn't use a GoPro camera. It's uh, a drone, a camera and drone in one piece. So it's one assembly, which is nice for maintenance. It makes it a lot easier to maintain. Um, it means I can't swap out the cameras, so I'm actually going to be getting a new drone soon enough so I can swap out a standard camera like what's on this drone with a thermal imager, with a LiDAR system, and do all different kinds of, kinds of work. You can see the little water sprayers going on over here to keep the dust down. Yeah. That's the end of that video. Let's go to June. We got another video. Again, from the same side. It leaves on the trees. It's green again. Yeah. Except for those two down there that are purple. Yeah. And see how much further they've gotten. Actually, that uh, pause it again. That building that's still standing is now in the bottom part of our screen. I, as I looked at the other oh. one, it, uh, I realized that wasn't the one, but this is it's the one now. It's in the bottom of our screen. That was the employee's entrance with the turnstiles and so on. So that building is the one that's still standing there. I'm not sure if that other little one is or not. I, I didn't notice that on the other side of the fence. Well, we'll find out soon because the three to model will show it. All right. If it's there or not. So continue with your flyby. I hit the back 10 seconds button. By oh, accident. my gosh. Well, can I have a rerun? <laughs> and this is all the progress. Look at all the excavators they've got. Oh, yes. There's, there's two, four, six, eight of them I can count quickly. 
and I got this sorter here that is now leaving, leaving the bottom left of the screen. It got, must have something there that's pulverizing all the, the stuff because they got several piles and some of them are pretty fine looking uh, material. Yep, this is, a, this is a rock crusher sorting machine that sorts everything by rock size. So they got different size, different, different piles with different size material on it. Pause it again. I'm not quite sure what's uh, sitting on the roof over here uh, on our left. That's just a that's just debris. It looks yeah, it like, looks like it to me. That debris went quite a ways. Let's see, go back. This stuff here on, on the roof. Uh, on the roof here, yeah. 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 I think those are just yeah, so it looks like it's, uh, scroll roof tiles. Well, it looks like debris that has flown from somewhere else. I don't know. Oh, it's way too heavy. Do I have a better photo video of that? Oh, that's all right. Continue this video. Because we'll... this is the 1st of June. Some of these videos are quite long. Very nice, though. Now, will the videos be available when you finish your project on the website? Uh, probably not. Physic in terms of hard drive space, they're just too big to load up on the web page. Uh, this one, other than the edited video, like this video we're watching right now, <coughs> takes up 1.1 gigs of hard drive space because it's recorded in 4K. Uh huh. So it's absolutely huge in, in terms of trying to host that on a web page. I could put it on YouTube. Right. That'd work fine. And then put the link on your page. Yeah. <coughs> uh, let's see, do we want to do July 1st or July 4th, which is technically the 3rd? <laughs> oh, uh, Here we go. Was there much difference? Not really, but this one will give yeah, it. Yeah, the tiles. Yeah, the tiles. And that's all sort. the debris that's on the roof. Uh, some sort of tiles. Yeah, the old roofing tiles that, as they replace them, they just kind of take the broken ones and toss them onto the roof. Yeah. Kind of not exactly the most brilliant way of storing old material on your roof. But it was expressed to those of Jed Phone, not, <laughs> not necessarily those of Calvin Castine or Hometown Cable. Yeah. As I think it's I think it's a brilliant place place to store them myself. <laughs> well, there's a load of photos in here because this was the one this is the third um, 3D model I did okay actually. it's the front the, the just the oh we did we had the uh, front view I flew up to can, one can you go back one is that possible see how handy you are back one back uh, previous previous photo you had See how good he is there. No, 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 no. Oh, the downside no. is that closed. <laughs> okay. All right. So what do we got here? I tried to fly up to the window to see into the building uh -huh. to see what I could see, and I'm like five feet away from the building. But the downside is because the light differential be between the outside right. and the inside, you can't actually see. But I just found it someone funny because someone left their keys on the windowsill. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's someone's car keys they left up there. Uh, we found them. We're looking for them. Okay, right there. Mm -hmm. the, uh, on our bottom left, that's the original building. Uh, if you look at old photos of uh, where the school was, uh, for many years uh, into the 50s and 60s, you could still make out where the original old school was. Yeah. Uh, before they built the new elementary school, which was Russell's Point High School at the time. Uh, this was the, where the abandoned Russell's Point school building was. And in 1934 is when uh, Harris McKenna and Harrison moved in. And all this construction came after that period. Originally, they were just using that original old school. Okay? And that original old school building doesn't exist. Well, they built around it in the same area, so there, there might be inside interior parts that are still there, I would guess. They didn't tear anything down when they did it. They didn't replace it. They built around it. Maybe. 
Uh, can I do this conveniently? Probably not. So go to the YS 3D models and we'll load up July 3rd. This is one of the 2D maps I've made. Once the building was more demolished and it was smaller, so it'd be easier to render the map. And this is a 3D model I made from the made, made, in, uh, made using the photos from the 3rd of July, which was rendered on the 4th of July. Takes a little bit to load up everything because this is what this does. It stitches all the photos together. Uh huh. And there are almost a thousand of photos stitched together to make this image. So you get shots from all angles and then... Uh, 998 photos. You get shots from all the angles and it takes all the photo metadata, the GPS, the facing of the drone, the angle of the camera, and uses all that data to stitch everything together into this 3D model. Well, if this was on the 4th, looks like they took the day off. Yep. Not really working. On oh, the 3D model won't show actual activity, but I... No, no, but it doesn't show any excavators or anything out there, so... No. They weren't working that day. Nope. And I only do these models after hours because I don't want them to fly the drone over people in active right. construction, so... Right. But you can zoom in. There's no interior, so that there's it just kind of looks through. That right, photo's looking into it as well. And it's for a very nice 3D model. I can see all the tiles they left on the roof. Mm -hmm. And that was what is left <laughs> was left on the 4th of July. If I go back. We can go what is left at the end of July. And today is August 2nd, so this is just a few days ago. Yeah, I took these photos, I think it was either on the 30th or 31st. Again, after hours. Mm -hmm. You see there's where the basement was here, the sub-level there. And there's a little ba building that was apparently under the main building just kind of stuck over there that was a that was shown in the demolition after the demolition finished the back side of it so they're digging into this building now the oh, larger section there being gone this section is older so you can actually see it's brick pretty much all the way through kind of shocking the amount of detail the 3D model can get Reinforced poured concrete and brick. And I'll probably do some more models when I get back from my trip to Atlanta. See the pancakes of material that they're just leaving, they're just placing it down. Well, I would say you've, pro you've got maybe another month to uh, get any more. Demolition video or or photos because there's not going to be much left. Once school starts, I don't think there'll be much above ground. Nope. Let's see. And that's the Wyatt stuff. And I told you that I had the 3D model of uh, the church in Champlain. Okay. Before they started construction. St. Mary's Church. I might have to drag this over to the other screen so I can read. We'll go to the 3D model for the church. All right, we've moved on to the church. and <laughs> Pay no attention when there's no picture on that screen to that image you see reflecting back. That's me. <laughs> <laughs> and this is an old 3D model of the church. Okay, this was uh, before they took anything down on the outside. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can zoom right in on the statue. Yeah, that's Samuel D. Champlain, all right. And like one nice thing with this system, if you need to do a roof or something, whoop, give me the church back. Bad computer. There. If 
you want to if you're doing a roof, I can scan the roof and wait for it to load for a second. I can get you the square footage of the roof for surface area. Okay. So if someone's it, replacing a roof, I you, scan it, 3D model it, have the surface area. It uh, can figure out the the highs and lows here to get the actual. I mean, it's not a flat roof, so. Nope. So it does the geometry on it. It does all the geometry on it. Sometimes if you have different roof materials on the same roof, it will mess up the geometry and it's less accurate. But if it's all the same roofing material like this one, you get all the uh, geometry. Well, I don't think accurate is a word you can use with more or less. Either it's accurate or it's not. <laughs> well, with Inac my, Inaccurate. Well, anything that I... <laughs> the way I do it with anything is... I get the measurement. And then add for waste anyway. Okay. So I had like five, like if I were to man measure it manually, I'd, I'd add ten percent for waste because I'm terrible doing it manually. But with this, I only had five. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So Let's that's see. that's the accuracy of it. All right. Have, show us the church roof. You're so good. Yeah. Let's see the church roof here. There we go. There we go. This is actually it's in pretty good condition. The, the discolorations are actually not missing tiles. Okay, the little black spots aren't yeah, missing tiles? Those aren't missing tiles. It's just gunk that's on the roof for some reason. I haven't been able to identify what it is because I didn't fly the drone right up to it. I could actually well, show how it works right now. We'll do the church steeple, just grab this area measurement here kind of hard to see at this angle for me. Pick the four corners of the church steeple roof. And the square footage of that is the surface area is 1,420 feet square. So how does this know but having only a top view, what the actual angle is of of the uh, this going is, up. This is a two D map uh -huh. of the three D of the three D model. Okay. So it has all the different so you, points on the three D model, and it's just a two D version just, of it. It's just just flattened for the two D map. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see. There's another. I'll load up the video footage from uh, Pointer Roche that I did from the boat, too. I don't know how many years ago it was that uh, when Brian McBride was still operating a Chevy Subaru dealership, he brought me down and he flew his drone over over Plattsburgh, mm -hmm. uh, and I you know, found it very interesting. There's no question in anybody's mind that this was the wave of the future. And uh, But there's regulations now as to, because it could have easily gotten out of hand, so you've got yeah. regulations you've got to follow. And Oh, yeah. It's actually in some ways gotten easier, if you're at least if you're licensed. Like, it's fairly easy for a licensed uh, commercial drone pilot to fly in Plattsburgh. I usually, because it's not controlled airspace, it's all Class G to 700 feet. Normally, like... Well, you've got, you got the airport to worry about. Yeah, there's the airport to worry about, but it's Class G because it's not controlled airport, so it's easier. So I usually just do, if I'm flying nearby the airport, is I call up the NOTAM service, services and put a NOTAM out, say I'm going to fly in the area, so plane aircraft pilots know, hey, there's a guy flying there. Not that it matters too much, because if I see a plane coming, I land. Because right. I'm... Regulation says that I give right of way to manned aircraft, which is, I'm perfectly happy doing that, trust me. I don't want to cause problems. And I usually get a hold of uh, Chris Craig at the airport to let him know, hey, I'm going to be flying at this address. So when I did the Plattsburgh House of Prayer photos for them, because I wanted to get some photos of the roof and model, model the building, I got the NOTAM set up, notified Chris ahead of time, and it was all set to go. Now, like around Burlington... That's class E to the ground, I think. Well, it's controlled airspace to the ground. So that, I've got to go through an LANC system, get authorization from air traffic control to fly around 
the Burlington Airport. I haven't actually flown around the Burlington Airport because to me that's just too busy an airport. So I don't bother. I like quieter areas, areas that are less concerning, lower risk. Alright, so this is Point of Rush right here? Mm-hmm. I'm on the boat. I'm on this little right. pontoon boat. Whenever I find my mouse pointer. There it is. Because yeah. oh, there's a state law now that you can't operate drones from state parks. You can fly over them. Right. They can't stop you from doing that. So someone from Pointe Roche wanted some video for a project that they're doing. Is like, I'll do it. I just can't operate from the park. And they're like, I got some of the boat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you can't go up to the mountains then, or the state land, and shoot, shoot a mountaintop. Depends where the mountaintop is. No, if you've got private property, then you yeah. can. Because the Adirondack Park is a mix of private and public property. So, depending where I am, I can do it. And this is a nice view of the bay. I need to edit this together and make a music video out of it. Which is kind of annoying, because I've... One thing I like I liked to do, and was doing for a while until the state ad added that regulation, is I go places and make music videos to kind of show off the various different state parks and the various different parts of New York. Right. Now I can't do that. Well, you can do it, but not... Not as easily, no. Yeah. It's a real pain now. Because i got to get a boat or something. Right. What else is interesting? We'll go to Lexar here. Like this thing. That's going to be a link, isn't it? This is a video I did for Arch, the Adirondack Architectural Heritage Group of Camp Santanoni. This is before, because this is state land, so this is from before, before the state put that rule in, so I could fly there at the time. Okay. And I made this music video for them. And this is one of the great camps. I think I need to replace my video card, even though it's a brand new one. Like, I've made videos like this for people who have lakeside cabins that they rent out to people. Uh -huh. So I can fly over a cabin and edit a video, put some music to it, put some information on it. So they can show potential renters what, uh, what their property looks like. and It's more than just a picture of the outside of the building. It's the outside of the, the property and so on. I have one of those... There I am again. Okay, good. And this is a video I put together for someone for their camp. They give them permission to show people this. I, they asked me to go out in every season and take some video and photos from them. So I went there in the spring, summer, fall, and winter. And these are the spring, spring part of the video. And it's still showing the video, the music from the previous video. Well, that's all right. We're not interested in the music. <laughs> You can see they're actually there that day. Right. They got a stream that runs by. That's actually Old Route 11. That's actually part of Old Route 11, which runs across their property. Yeah. 11 and Route 9 both. Uh, not to mention lots of other roads were, were straightened due to uh, a lot of accidents, a lot of heavy curves on a lot of those original roads. They weren't made for a lot of accidents, 60 mile an hour traffic. Bridges that weren't meant for the traffic that they were holding, because like that bridge can't do much traffic. No, but they could have replaced the bridge, but uh, it, easier to straighten it. I'd use the old Route 11, flew the drone down that for the cutscenes, to swap them from one season to the next. I think it came out really well. Yeah. So what restrictions do people who uh, aren't in business 
I don't, uh, does everybody have to have a license now for? No. No? Uh, if you don't have a license, the commercial license, you just can't get paid. Okay. And if there's an airport within five miles, I don't believe you can fly in that, air, in that radius. They don't want you there. Unless it's like some already established RC park. Because there's already established RC parks, even within five miles of major airports. And the hobbyists can still fly there. And the biggest restriction, biggest difference between me and someone that's not licensed is they just can't get paid, pretty much. And I have some liberties I, that for where I can fly that they don't. Because I have this training and safety regulation knowledge and how everything's supposed to work. Right. I know how to read all the aeronautical maps, which really isn't that hard. <laughs> so do you they have to take busy. a test to get licensed? I oh, assume, yeah. Assume you and it's a renew, renewing test every two years. I had to go take a test over in Burlington because that's where the testing facility mm -hmm. is. And then I have to renew. I have to take a new test every two years to renew the license. And they've improved it because, like, the first time I took the test, they're asking me questions like, you're flying from New York to Chicago, and there's a storm front, so what's the weather going to be like? <laughs> It's like, th th I'm flying this. I'm flying a drone. <laughs> I'm flying one of these things. <laughs> this isn't going from New York to Chicago. <laughs> they got rid of those questions. <laughs> it was just like, probably because I put a snarky answer on one. It's like, what are you going to do? It's like, what are you going to do for the weather? It's like, I I'm going to look out the window. If it's raining, I'm not flying. <laughs> yeah, stupid questions. That but The people giving the test weren't smart enough. Well, they didn't put enough effort into a... I'm, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> well, no, but that's... They just didn't know. Yeah. Because, and I don't necessarily blame them for putting the question on there, because these are people that are experienced in doing the testing for, for like, pilot. actual... Yeah, pilots. Pilot pilots, yeah. not just right, drone right. pilots. So, they, so they're thinking of it from that perspective, and so that's the questions they're asking, not necessarily realizing that I'm flying a three-pound oh. drone that only goes for 25 minutes. Well, uh, I want somebody designing that test who flies drones so they know the problems that a drone can have mm -hmm. you know and uh, so but nothing yeah. the, <laughs> nothing the feds system. or the state does uh, surprises me so no <laughs> and uh, and it's a good system they make sure that the pilots know the regulations you know how to read an aeronautical map you know what the rules that govern your flights are like even though I'm a commercially licensed pilot I still can't fly the drone over 400 feet above ground level with some exceptions. If I'm inspecting a radio tower that goes up to a thousand feet, I can fly, the rule is 400 feet above ground level or 400 feet above the, build, the building that you're working on. So if there's a tower that goes to a thousand feet, I can fly the drone to 1,400 feet. Am I actually going to fly to 1,400 feet? No. <laughs> well, you could climb that tower and yeah. <laughs> operate it from up there. <laughs> and the thing is, from 400 feet away, though, I'm not getting much detail from the, of the top of the drone. So right. if I'm inspecting the tower, I'm going to yeah, be, like, yeah, 50 gotta, feet. Yeah, you can't be 400 feet away from the tower. Because I'm like, not going to get any, de any details. Right. And there's the LAANC system for getting out flight authorization for uh, controlled airspace. Not at all airports are in that system yet, so sometimes I have to contact air traffic control directly and go, hey, can I f get authorization to fly here? It, and I can't just call them up and ask. It, there's an online system, system. There's this drone portal system on the FAA webpage. I go into and ask for authorization to do that. And I can ask for authorization to do other things like fly beyond line of sight for larger sites, uh, authorization to fly over people, which is something I've never asked for because my drones are good. I trust them. But I just don't want to take the risk of the drone falling out of the sky and hitting well, someone. Anytime you're flying it, if you're flying, taking a picture of the Wyeth building, you're flying over people. I mean, there's, there's no, that's uh, closed. It's they're not working those days. Yeah, but when you fly from over somebody's house, or you're flying over people. You, oh yeah, I mean, if somebody walking on the street, you're flying over. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> over the people. Yeah, yeah for like, um, where's the Fourth of July video? Because well, you did the parade, if a little bit of the parade, but you did it over from the lake. From right? the lake to yeah. avoid it. Yeah, but there's yeah. there are boats on the lake, yeah. <laughs> so you're you're over people. You can't avoid. No, not as much. Like there's there's other rules there, like uh, you can't you have to be 400 or 500 feet away from people's houses, but when I'm doing a job in a suburban part of a suburban neighborhood like Plattsburgh, it's physically impossible. Right. So it's there. It, it's kind of one of those annoying things. It's like it's there, but it it functionally you can't follow it, and I'm going to get in trouble for saying that. But like, 
some of those things, it means you can't fly whatsoever. Yeah, well, like a church, a picture of the church at St. Mary's. Yeah, three there's D modeling houses. the church, three D modeling there's, the Plattsburgh house of prayer next door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's okay. all about risk, uh, minimizing the risk as as much as you can. And I'm trained in the. I was a former soldier, so I'm trained in risk management. We have an entire process in the army that I still use for this. And some of the times, like. I'm trying to think of the way I want to put it, but if there's any, if there's undue risk, I just don't do the yeah, flight. Yeah, right, don't do it. And I haven't done, and I've done that before. I just refuse right. to do the flight because it's just, right. I can't, to. I can't guarantee the safety, so I just don't do it. Okay. Which is a fairly easy decision to make, really. Well, yeah. And it depends on weather and stuff and so on. Where is it? Uh, the parade, well, everyone, the parade is on YouTube already, right. so. so. Yeah. I think uh, I I think I, I think I grabbed it and I put it on my website too. So mm -hmm. yeah, that was a pretty popular video. Yeah. The most popular video I did was that Fort Montgomery video. Was it? People are still watching that today. <laughs> <laughs> well, why not? Uh, what else? Oh, I got photos of the Oxbow Bridge because I heard they were going to demolish that. So the Who Bridge? Oxbow Bridge. Oh, that's bold. Ah, the difference: DNG, which is the raw image, and the JPEG. But I want a photo of the actual bridge. That's the DNG. There's the JPEG of it. And like one thing I like to do with this is to use the drone to preserve historic yeah. structures that are going to be demolished. Yes. Like I want to do a 3D model of Camp Santononi, but with the New York State regulations, that's going to be a pain to do because they want me to have $2 million of insurance coverage for the drone and the property. And I have insurance for everything, obviously. The All drones right. are covered. I've got a liability policy in case the drone crashes and causes damage or anything, not that this little thing is going to cause a heck of a lot of damage well, unless it hits a person. If it landed on my head, yeah. Yeah. But they want, uh, like the cost of insurance goes up exponentially after the first million dollars of coverage. Uh-huh. So $2 million is actually like four times more expensive. <laughs> really? For just a small increase, well, small increase from one to two. But that, that jump is like four times more expensive, so I haven't done some of the state stuff that I wanted to do yet. Hmm. You think it would actually go down rather than go up? So is that you on the bridge? No. No? Somebody else on the bridge? Someone showed up, and he was documenting it as well on foot. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, he yeah. was doing... He was on the other side. I, I'm on the right side of the bridge. He was on the left side of the bridge from this perspective. Uh-huh. And... Um, I wasn't fl I, I'm flying a fair distance away from the bridge, so I wasn't particularly worried about him being there. But he he was taking photos from the ground, and I was doing it from the air, getting up close so you can see some of the different joints right. and how they go together. And you can see the riveted construction. I don't know if I do the JPEG of the bridge. So they started to take it down. I don't know if they've done it yet. I don't think they have started. But you can see that someone put too much weight on the bridge once. Because you see the way a little buckling there, a little buckling on the bridge, which is one reason why there's no traffic on it, because they can't support weight anymore. So you're telling me not to walk on it? Oh, walking on it's <laughs> not going to do anything. But you can't put a car on that. Right. It's it's you just too dangerous. Right. And people have been taking there are little rose things on the sides that were on the uh, guardrails. Uh huh. But, but people have been taking them. Collecting them, huh? Yeah. Souvenirs. Souvenirs for the bridge. So most of the rose patterns that were on it are all gone, which is unfortunate. Well, fortunate and unfortunate because when the building, when the bridge is demolished, they're going to be gone anyway. Right. So at least someone's got them, I suppose. And I used the drone to actually get some close-up details of how the bridge was built. Yeah. But again, it shows you with no railing there, how unsafe it is at the present time, even for pedestrians. Oh yeah, there's no railing anymore. You see, you put the boards lengthwise like this, <laughs> and the road decking is just wood boards. The wood deck bridge. Right. That's how long it's been there, just... Yeah. It's a neat old again, bridge. Yeah, it wasn't built for uh, modern traffic. It was oh no, built Model for T. A, yeah, or a Model a, T truck is not a heavy truck. Uh, or, or a horse and buggy going across it or whatever. 
Uh, it wasn't definitely is not meant for big rigs today. Those things are like sixty tons sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Those things. Are, it's amazing. Amazing what we can do nowadays. Yeah. Uh, I also got video of the dam demolition in Osable Forks. I wanted to get video of the dam when it was intact, but I didn't know about it ahead of time. So you got there too late. So I got there too late. And you can see with the wind of the, the gusts, the, the, way, uh, the way the wind is affecting the trees, how, like the wind doesn't affect the drone that much. Oh, that's the wrong video. Now we got the correct video. Okay. What is up with the player? Uh, it's a little jumpy. Yeah, that's not actually in the video. That is my computer. So the downside, I've got a good video card in this to run three 4K screens, but apparently it's not quite good enough. So I need to get a better video card on here. So yeah, that was the uh, dam that was above all Sable Forks that was done. That's being demolished at the time I was taking the video. Is that a J and J Rogers dam, or what was it? Uh, it 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 was associated with the uh, mill that was there. Okay. I'm not sure what the name of the dam was. I want to 3D model the mill there too, but I haven't had the time to. And I can do that one because I can take off from the bus garage across the um, for the school there. That's across the river. And. Hopefully they don't complain. <laughs> <laughs> I've been taking for, like, for um, the Wyeth photos, I've been taking on off at the school across the street, and no one's complained yet, so. Uh, well, you can always park on the side of the road. And... Oh, actually, no, I can't take off from right of ways. That's an FAA regulation. I can't do it from the side of the road? No. Because that's right away, and they don't they don't want you there, and that's understandable too. Because then there's people driving by in traffic. Right. Uh, what else? I got an entire folder for Fort Montgomery. Well, share it with us. No oh, DNGs again. These were taken back on. 2018. A year ago. Well, it's in the fall. Autumn south. It's late in the fall because the leaves are all gone. Yeah, because I wanted I wanted to see see what details I could make of the top. Right. When there's no leaves on the uh, sumac that's up there. Yeah, those darn leaves. Oh no, this is spring. <laughs> yeah, yeah the leaves are coming. It was like, I thought it was fall at first because there's no leaves, but then it's like, oh, the road's flooded. That ain't fall. <laughs> there was a little green on it, so the leaves are coming, not going. Yeah. The water was really high then. And this was a few years ago. What year is this one? This will be when I got the second drone. Oh no, this is May this year. I forgot I flew over the fort this year. I've done so so many flies of the fort. There's a log down there and everything. Mm -hmm. And here's an old video from the inside. This is actually part of the Fort Montgomery video that's on YouTube. This was done with the first drone I got, which has the fisheye, kind of. Yeah, one year they had a, a great event there, reenactors and everything, but I guess the insurance just oh. wasn't practical to, to keep doing it. The insurance base... I do insur insurance work, work for another my other company. And uh, there is not an insurance company in the world that once they realize what the fort is and what condition it's in, there's not an insurance company in the world that would cover an event like that. Yeah. Which kind of really sucks, because that was a cool event. I went there a couple times. But the building is just... Yeah, there's holes you can fall in. There's all kinds of dangers. Oh, yeah. 
particularly if you try to go up on top of that thing, but most of the time you can't do it anyway because the sumac is too thick. One reason why I don't like taking video of the fort in the summer is because you can't see anything. Right. It's all overgrown. And this is actually testing to see how far I could see the drone. Oh no, this is actually me still there. I'm right in the shot. Yeah. Because I've got other video. I didn't actually organize this folder at all, so I'm just clicking on random things. I took off from where the border post is on the bridge, uh -huh. on the old bridge abutment. And I can fly it and still see the drone over the fort. Just to see how far away I can do it. I don't like flying it that far because it's just a dot. So what happens uh, if it would never, never happen to you, but if it happened to somebody else that they lost contract, if it contact, loses contact? Yeah. The drones, at least the drones that I have, have a GPS on them. So I just pull up the map and go last drone location, and it transmits the location of the drone until the drone battery on the drone dies, so I can recover the drone. But if it's, uh, let's say in a case like this, if it's moving north, it's going to keep moving north to until it dies, or what? Well, it depends on, again, depends on the drone. Yeah. Because mine, if it loses contact with the controller, uh -huh. my drones are supposed to come back to the home point. Okay. Or they'll just crash where they are. They'll hover, if they can't return for whatever reason, they they'll, just hover. They'll hover until the battery until dies. battery. Which makes recovery <laughs> in the event of a failure a lot easier, because I know where it is. Oh, well, yeah, but if you're out in a wooded area... It's going to be lost in trees somewhere. It's going to be tough to... It makes it easy, easier. It does, doesn't make it guaranteed. Right. Because then i got to find out which tree it's stuck up in. Well, you can put a string on your drone, like a kite. <laughs> then they're going to have a string that comes back up, wraps itself around a propeller, and takes it out of the air. <laughs> but, no, there's tethered drones. That is an actual thing. But you don't use string for tethering drones. I got a request from New York State... <laughs> From yeah, it was the New York State Police one time, and they were like, "Can you supply us with a tethered drone for a project that we want to do?" It, and they gave me no specifications whatsoever. It's like well, they want a tethered drone. Well, what camera do you want? How good a camera do you want? What, yeah. Like, what flight time do you want? Do you want this do to be a, a do you want this to be a wireless drone that's on a tether, or do you want the tether to broadcast the information to, down on the tether and provide power through the tether? I, you didn't provide me this information, so I can't help you. I think someone else did that job. <laughs> but, yeah. All right. So um, we've got a sampling I, of uh, what you've done. I probably say it's correct I, to say more to come. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be more to come. Because I've got to edit all the Pointer Roche video together. I've got to edit and do the video of uh, Wyeth. And maybe we could add that to the project that you want to do, interviewing Wyeth people. We right. can add those videos and photos for that. You just have to just ask and bring a flash drive over someday, and I'll provide those to you. Okay. Or an external hard drive would be better, because those are big files. Um, unless you've got any questions. No. No. Uh, again, your website is... Gruntspilotbots.com. Grunts. Grunts Pilotbots. So it's not Grunt, it's Grunts. S on the M. Yep. Gruntspilotbots.com just rolls off the tongue just <laughs> rolls off the tongue really easily it's a bit of a long long web page and my email is just jedthone at that gruntspilotbots.com email address uh, I am open Friday and Saturday Friday from about 3 or 4 o'clock <laughs> to about 7 and Saturday usually I try to be in here for noon I'm usually not here until 1 because of various things at home and then closing at about seven or eight depending on why I, I gotta go home real quick or not and if, if you walk by and the lights are on just call see if I'm in the office and but the website's available 24 hours a day seven days a week and same with the online store that's on the web page yeah and uh, if you uh, can't remember that gruntspilots.com uh, you've got a Facebook page yeah Jed Thone or is it Jedediah no it's Grunts Pilot Bots but on Facebook. Okay, but so your personal Facebook page doesn't have a reference to the uh, to the Grunts Pilots? I think it does. I don't remember off the top of my head. I'm not signed into it at the See, moment. See, I, I would have uh, 
I would have gone thones, drones, or something like that. So people. <laughs> well, 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 one thing I want to do is I want to set this up to be franchised out across the, the okay. nation. So I wanted to. Okay. Because I was thinking of like um, Champlain bots or Adirondack Bot. aerial photography, uh -huh. but it was a geographic location. And I wanted to bring the company so I could do franchises across the nation and to have a more and have a better name for that. It can't really be tied to a geographical location. Okay. All right, if I ever need uh, something, a name for something, I'm not going to come to you, Judd. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> now, McDonald's, yep, that, that works. Burger King, yep, that works. But <laughs> well, Grunts Moves Junk over in Vermont does well. <laughs> And they franchise across the country now. <laughs> Do they? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we've been talking here on this August 2nd, 2019 with Jedediah Thone at 103 Lake Street. Uh, is it an apartment? So what's it called? Suite 102. Suite 102. Because there's two rooms. Two rooms. Whatever that storage room in the back is, it's a room. Right. <laughs> Suite 102 here, right, right across from you old timers, right across from uh, Ank Till's restaurant. Mm -hmm. Now that flower shop. And now a flower shop is next door to what used to be Ink Deal's restaurant. Uh, not sure why, why I think uh, I think I'm pretty sure who lived there, but I'm not going to get it wrong on gun camera. <laughs> 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 All right. Thanks, Jed. Yep. And I uh, hope you enjoyed, uh, everybody enjoyed looking at these uh, these photos. Uh, you can check out, uh, go to his online uh, site to, to check out the photos he's got uh, on there and uh, more details if you like and thanks for watching and supporting viewers supported local television hometown cable thank you